Brigadier General McWilliams and Brigadier General Hennigan thank all of our special guests for joining us today. Now taking his position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Colonel Daniel H. Coleman. Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, spiritual fitness plays an important role in the making of the United States Marine. Today, as we celebrate the cha this change of command, we recognize the importance spiritual fitness has played in the accomplishments of our commanding general. You are encouraged to examine your own spiritual fitness, that part that ties mental, physical, and social fitness together and give them meaning and purpose. That very special relationship that gives hope when all else seems to fail. That keeps us on track when we are tempted and gives us joy when we have done well. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks this morning for the leadership that General McWilliams has provided, not only over the last couple of years, but in multiple tours here at 2nd MLG, each increasing in responsibility and each having grown in the leadership he has offered molding and shaping the culture of being the best and striving to be ever better. We ask that you bless him and Allison on their, as they journey to their next assignment, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command in Norfolk. We ask that you bless, also bless General Hennigan as she takes the helm, another commanding general with a heart for both logistics and the people who make logistics happen, especially the people. We ask that you grant her the strength and energy, wisdom and imagination to bring us farther along the path to health and readiness. Last, but always at the forefront, we ask your blessing on our Marines, sailors, and civilians here and around the world. Bless us all with the honor, courage, and commitment to care for one another and to carry out our duties in a manner that reflects your grace and love. In your holy name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you both. Present day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from muzzle loaded muskets of yesterday. In those early days, the line of battle was just that, a line of two or three ranks and looked much like the parade formation you will see today. The adjutant forms the line for battle the adjutant for today's ceremony is Captain Talon K. Wilkerson. Service Command Marine Corps. 1950 to 1959. 
and signed 1 April 1951 to Fort Street, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Redesignated 1 July 1956 as 2nd Combat Services Force Troops, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Redesignated 1 March 1957 as 4th Service Regiment Force Troops, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Elements participated in the landings in Lebanon July through November 1958, 1960-1987. Elements participated in the Cuban Missile Crisis, October through December 1962. Elements participated in the intervention in the Dominican Republic, April through June 1965. Redesignated 1 October 1975 as Force Troops, 2nd Service Support Group, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Redesignated 30 June 1978 as 2nd Force Service Support Group, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Elements participated as part of the Multinational Peacekeeping Force in Lebanon, August 1982 to February 1984, 1988 to present. Elements participated in Persian Gulf, January through June 1988. Redesignated 30 June 1989 as 2nd Force Service Support Group, Fleet Marine Force Atlantic. Elements provided disaster relief support to Charleston, South Carolina and Puerto Rico after Hurricane Hugo. September through October 1989. Elements participated in Operation Just Cause, December 1989. Participated in Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Southwest Asia, as a direct support command, and with other elements of First Force Service Support Group, December 1990 through March 1991. Elements participated in Operation Provide Comfort, Iraq, April through July 1991. Elements participated in Haitian Refugee Operations Cuba, November 1991 to October 1994. Elements provided disaster relief. Support to Dade County, Florida after Hurricane Andrew, September to October 1992. Redesignated 1 September 1992 as 2nd Force Service Support Group, U.S. Marine Forces Atlantic. Elements participated in Operation Provide Promise Bosnia, July through August 1994. Elements participated in Operation Enduring in Cuba, January through April 2002, deployed during December 2002 to Kuwait in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom Iraq, March through June 2003, March 2005 through February 2006, February 2007 through February 2008, and January 2009 through January 2010, redesignated 9 November 2005 as 2nd Marine Logistics Group. Elements participated in Operation Enduring Free in Afghanistan, March 2009 through March 2010. Second Marine Logistics Group continues to serve in support of two Marine Expeditionary Forces' role as a service retained force and its mission as a global crisis response force. are being aligned from left to right in order to get them in their exact position for the parade. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please rise for the March on of the Colors and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem.
while the other two cheered three times. To further honor the Dominican Crusades, the band then marched out from the line and trooped up and down while playing. The square formation used by the band was its wheeling turns and counter marches, dates back to 300 BC when Alexander's Macedonian colonies of Spearman conquered all enemies from ancient Greece to India.
The manual of arms also dates back to the ancient times, when commanders would drill their troops in preparation for battle. These repeated drills ensured familiarity and confidence in the handling of weapons. It also instilled automatic and immediate response to commands, vital to the success on the battlefield, as well as physically conditioned them to handle heavy personal weapons of that time.
and gentlemen, please rise for honors to Lieutenant General David A. Adignan and remain standing for honors to the Commanding General, 2nd Marine Logistics Group. Ladies and gentlemen, now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General, 2nd Marine Logistics Group. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to Brigadier General Michael E. McWilliams.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now taking her position in the reviewing area is Brigadier General Maura N. Hennigan. Directed to report to U.S. Transportation Command for assignment as Commander, Joint Enabling Capabilities Command. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Brigadier General Mara N. Hennigan, Effective 0901. To July 2024, you will assume the duties as the Commanding General, Second Marine Logistics Group. Signed, Eric N. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps.
Brigadier General McWilliams. Mike, congratulations on a job well done. The accomplishments of 2nd Marine Logistics Group during your tenure are a direct reflection of your outstanding leadership. I know how much effort you put into meeting global force management requirements while keeping 2nd MLG at a high state of material and operational readiness. You were undoubtedly the right Marine at the right time to lead this command. Whether improving day-to-day -day readiness, prioritizing warfighting capabilities, or supporting vital training exercises, you did an impressive job meeting the requirements of today while preparing 2nd MLG for future contingencies. The Marine Corps is grateful to you and Allison for your leadership, as well as everything you do for our Marines, sailors, and their families. We wish you the very best as you settle into your next assignment. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. To Brigadier General Hennigan, Mora, as you take the helm of 2nd Marine Logistics Group, know that you have my total trust and confidence. I know you will bring the same outstanding leadership you demonstrated as President of Marine Corps University and throughout your career. Congratulations and best wishes to you and Joe as you take responsibility for the daily operations of 2nd MLG. Semper Fidelis. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, Commanding General to Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General David A. Audignon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I knew that you had some juice in the Carolina Magta, but you and the chaplain worked a deal because this weather today, I mean, I knew it, but holy cow. Good on you. Thanks, chaps. Ladies and gentlemen, what a, what a great morning. Transformation in the last two years. 
I think it's really a remarkable transformation, and it really starts with your leadership, but it also encompasses all the people that you rallied around and led to a vision that you had to make sure that the division and the law and the, and the uh, MEF could operate at a high standard. I've never seen anything like it. That, that fast of a transition. It's just remarkable. And then the camaraderie and the sense of community and family that the two of you have generated is just really remarkable. Um, you can feel it when you're down here. It's very, very special. And for those who are in this MLG, I'm going to tell you, Mark, your calendar, mark where you were, because this is what right looked like, and see if you can replicate what Team McWilliams did. So, on behalf of Diana, who can't be here today, she sends her love to you. I wish you the very, very best up in uh, Norfolk, Suffolk. Have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Just glad we're not neighbors anymore. <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to you first, okay, my friend? <laughs>
our partners in Second Marine Division, General Odom, General Worth, and your entire division, Second Mall, General Swan, General Benedict, and your entire mall, uh, Colonel Fletcher and Amig, and then our adjacent partners, General uh, Huntley and Challenger and all of the MARSOC team, and then Colonel Rizzo and the entire NCIS team. So that, that is the Carolina MAGTAF. And, and gentlemen, um, your leadership, your mentorship, your partnership is what really makes this Carolina MAGTAF uh, ready to go and respond to crisis globally. And I would just like to say thank you for, uh, for your partnership with Second MOG. And, and for all of you, thank you for your mentorship for, for me personally. So, so to make all that happen, we also have, I, I, again, there's so many people that contribute to that, but I would again be remiss if I didn't mention the formation behind me. We have our 06 commanders, both Navy captains and Marine colonels. And they run their organizations every day. They do their business, and thus they do the business of the MLG. In the audience, we have some of our 05 commanders and their senior enlisted. They're where the rubber meets the road. They take guidance from those 06 commanders, but they're the ones that are out deploying around the globe, five different combatant commands across the United States train. And, and, and they're the ones that make it happen every single day. They, they, they and their Marines and sailors. The second MLG staff, like they're, they're a final four team all stop. But I would not ask or want a better staff. Um, they thread the needle every single day by getting Marines and sailors out of, this, out of Camp Lejeune to train and deploy, to respond to crisis, and balance that with keeping a ready, ready bench to be able to respond to things that the master commander needs. That's not an easy job. And they do it every single day. Uh, and we ask so much of them. And then all the other things that the staff does. And they're just remarkable. Our command team and command deck, so, so our front office, they take chaos and they try to I don't know how they do it. And it's just thank you all for that. And then my command team, or our command team, uh, I've been blessed with Sergeant Major Turner, Galtney, CMC, Johnson, Beck, uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Colonel Wilson, Colonel Coleman. I could not ask for better battle buddies. Uh, they, they help keep this place running every single day. They last for all the personal note, right? So um, it takes a village, and I've had a lot of people who have helped me, as many of you know, I need a lot of help. So, so a lot of people have helped me throughout my life. So first, my mentor, some here, some aren't. Thank you for investing the time in me. My, my parents couldn't be here this morning, but you know, I'm certainly grateful for the environment they created for me as a child and the love and support that they have for me today. I have friends here, uh, a couple, couple dear friends, uh, some here, some not, but, but uh, we're hundreds, thousands of miles apart sometimes, but, but their love and support for, for Alice and I is, is appreciated and noted. And uh, you know, we think about you all the time, even though we can't see you. Uh, to my family. So our three daughters are here. Um, so, so so proud of who you are and what you do. You're my biggest supporters. And uh, just thanks for, for who you are and thanks for supporting me for all these years and letting me do what I do. Uh, so my wife, Allison, like I couldn't ask for a better partner. And many of you told me that. I'm married up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> many of you in here. And, and you're not wrong. What some of you don't see every day is uh, is is her commitment to the Marine and Sailors and family, and, and what we now jokingly call her pro bono work for the Navy Marine Corps team. Hey, she understands how to build a community. She understands how to build camaraderie, and she's committed to those families, those Navy Marine Corps families. And um, and I couldn't be more grateful and appreciative to, to, to have have you do that and uh, and support me. But more importantly, I think the Marines, sailors, and their families who you've touched, they, they understand what you can do and what you do. And I, I just can't say thank you enough. Um, I, could, I could talk all morning about her as well. If I did, I would probably get choked up and I would probably um, get the words wrong. So I'm going to sum it up with some lyrics. I'm not going to sing to you. <laughs> There's some lyrics that go something like, I tried to write a song. I run the risk of getting perfect all wrong. Great words that can show us so much weight. I, I love you, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> last but certainly not least, uh, probably more important, is the Marines and Sailors of the Second MLG. So they are, um, they are our greatest asset. They are our greatest weapon system. 
they are best, the best that America has to offer. And I'm grateful every day that they, they uh, rose the right hand and sort of, and sort of support and defend the Constitution. Uh, I've learned so much from these men and women, not only this tour, but five other tours here. And I will tell you, it's been my honor and privilege to serve alongside them. General Henning and Laura, Joe, kids, welcome to Second MLG. Uh, you hear commanders say a lot of times, like, you're the right person for the job. And I told her this yesterday. Hey, but she is. She is the right officer for this job. We've known each other for about 10 years. The last couple of days in turnover, we've had great conversations. Her ideas, her experiences are going to take this MLG to the, to the next level. And I'm going to be on the sideline being the biggest cheerleader. So I wish you and your family uh, the best. And I look forward to seeing what you can do. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you so much. I'm now going to introduce the Commanding General of Second Marine Logistics Group, Joe Henning. Wow. So if you haven't picked up on it, there's been a history lesson throughout, starting from uh, General Adignan. So I'm going to keep with that. There's one thing the incoming commander has to do. And in historically speaking, it's be brief. So I am going to stick to tradition and stay with that. But I'm actually going to call out, which you probably shouldn't do as the new guy, but I'm going to do it anyway, the, the MAF commander as well as the former MLG commander and say there was one person who continually said that this weather would be this way today. And so similar to Patton, who said, I'm not going to ask for a lot. I just want our weather to be better than theirs. Sergeant Major Turner, this one's for you, so congratulations. Hey, and with that, um, truly, I've just got some quick thanks. Um, the mentors that I have had, both past and present, General Adignan, you represent them today, um, but truly, uh, General Odom, General Swan, uh, you know, I couldn't ask for better partners, better leaders, individuals who I've had the opportunity to work with. I've known uh, General Adignan from the sidelines uh, even longer than I've known Mike uh, since since about 2009, first year in Oman is Colonel Adagnan. Uh, it, it's just been such great partnership throughout this time. And, and really, I get the, the absolute honor of being able to work with all of you, and I'm so looking forward to it. So I thank you for that. Um, I also want to thank the Marines. Some of them are even represented here. I wouldn't be here if they weren't carrying me every day. And so truly, uh, the ones that are out here today, my logistics, uh, you know, partners truly in everything that they do. I couldn't ask for better individuals to work with, truly striving to support. And, and that's the name of the game. That's what we do. And uh, it's ever amazing. I thank my family, um, my kids who continually make me laugh every day and keep it honest. Um, so Michaela, Mackenzie, Molly, well done. Joe, couldn't do this without you. He hates to be called out, so I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you very much, honey, uh, for everything that you do. Um, I, like Mike, would tell you the village is truly what makes us get through uh, this Marine Corps career for 30 years. So Han, Al, you know, Andrew, Malia, you represent that village. You've carried me literally for years and years on end. Um, and, and I couldn't ask for more. And Val, I'm just going to say from the beginning, Val was a, a friend of mine, now General Jackson, um, going all the way back to TBS. So that covers my entire career, so I'm done with that one. And, and truly, last but not least, Mike Allison, um, incredible girls, at, you know, and I'm going to try Meredith Morgan. I miss one. <laughs> Madeline. And I, Madeline, always a cartoon. Um, Truly, I couldn't ask for a better family to come in behind. Uh, Mike, you've done incredible things with this MLG. I've known that. I've watched it from afar. I think I've been visiting you for the last two years. It had nothing to do with me trying to come in. Uh, it had everything to do with me uh, truly honoring our friendship, but more importantly, getting to watch really where these, these individuals are going. And truly, I want to pick up that mantle. So I will leave it in typical fashion from an education, uh, the former education for the Marine Corps, um, you created Barrow's image of professionals and logistics. So well done, my friend. Traditionally, flowers are presented to the spouses for their continuous dedicated service 
to the Marines, sailors, and their families. In lieu of flowers, Brigadier General McWilliams is making a donation to the American Cancer Society on behalf of Mrs. Allison McWilliams. And Brigadier General Hennigan is making a donation to the Marine Corps University Foundation on behalf, behalf of, of Mr. Mr. Joseph, Joseph Hennigan. Hennigan. Now, now taking her position in the reviewing area as the commanding general, 2nd Marine Logistics Group, Brigadier, Brigadier General Mara and Hennigan. March to command and review. Aye, aye, ma'am.
of the Marine Pit. It is customary for Marines to have served honorably to sing the first verse of the hymn.